When you search Thames Link Trip Report on YouTube, the results are usually unfavorable, criticizing the trains for their uncomfortable seats or their dirty appearance. Well, today, I will be putting this to the test on a trip between London and East Croydon. So, without further ado, let's go. So hello and good afternoon from London's St. Pancras station. Now this is my second favorite London train station. The first is Paddington. But this station is just as equally impressive. I mean just look at this train shed. It is ginormous. But anyways, some info about the station. It was opened on the 1st of October of 1868 and currently hosts EMR trains as well as Thameslink, Southeastern, and Eurostar services. Of course, a visit to St. Pancras Terminal isn't complete until you visit the John Betjeman statue. Shortly after the statue, there is a set of stairs that lead down to the lower level, which houses a food court, the Thameslink underground platforms, and the Eurostar International Departures Hall. In a way, the station feels like an airport, with things like the Departures Hall and the shops feeling more reminiscent of something you'd see at airports and not train stations. At the end of the corridor is where you'll find the entrance to the Thameslink platforms here at St. Pancras Station. For most destinations closer to London, Thameslink accepts the Oyster card as payment which is very useful for me as I don't have to worry about getting my own ticket. Not long after arriving at the platform, my train arrives. My train today is a Class 700 De Zero City train built by Siemens in Germany. These were built between 2014 and 2018. Now these trains are the reason why Thameslink gets all its hate. 
the seats on board in standard class are affectionately, or I guess you would say unaffectionately named, the ironing board seats, and we're about to see why. Alright, so let's take a quick look around our seat. Now the seats themselves are not comfortable at all, but they're not as bad as I thought. They're actually pretty well shaped and I found them at least decently comfy for a half an hour journey. The legroom can vary, if you're scooched all the way back you get a decent amount, but once you scooch all the way forward it's pretty much neck and neck. There's also a tray table, however it seems like this one has seen better days. Overall, I'm a bit surprised. I was expecting these seats to be far worse, but they're actually pretty decent so far. Other than that, some seats in standard class are designated priority seats for the pregnant and elderly, and these trains also feature first class, although I'd imagine it's not that much of a difference. These trains also feature complimentary Wi-Fi, although I did find the Wi-Fi sign-up page a bit on the unresponsive side. I did manage to get it to work at the end though, and it was pretty good for what it's worth. As we are fastly approaching East Croydon, what did I think about this trip? And is Thameslink really that bad? Well, I was pleasantly surprised. The seats did the job, and while the train wasn't the cleanest, it had most of the modern amenities. I guess all those videos set my expectations a bit too low, but do keep in mind, Thameslink operates much farther, and being stuck on this train for one or more hours is a whole other can of worms. In conclusion, I think Thameslink is best suited for quick suburban hops and not super long distance commuter rail.
And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it a bit informative as well as entertaining. If you did, I hope you consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. This is the 4905 here, and I will see you next time. Take care.